Good evening, or good morning. I don't know when I'm posting this. I don't know what day it is. But I just had a few uh, thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Um, I just, I love this time of year. I love looking at the green grass and the pretty blue skies. I love looking at everything growing and coming in and turning green. I don't know about you, but um, maybe you've got a flower bed or maybe you've got a little garden. I know my kids, my wife, they, they love uh, watching the plants sprout up and grow. Alex, he, you can hardly harvest anything. He just eats it right off the vine. His snap peas don't even make it to the house. And I just love seeing this growth. It is so neat to see that. One thing that's interesting to me about growth is um, how sometimes we feel like it's good and sometimes we're not so sure. We're not so sure about growth because growth can sometimes mean change. A lot of times we like things the way they are. We want to do things the way we've always done them. We're comfortable with things on a certain level and things have been a certain way for a very long time. And uh, when we grow, when we change, when we learn more, then our perspective changes and our attitude changes and the things that we find interesting now maybe we didn't think was so interesting before or vice versa so when we grow <clears throat> when we grow and experience change it can be uncomfortable I, I think it's interesting we we uh, see the excitement in that of a flower blooming and and we see that as growth as a positive thing but when we see growth happening in in our own lives there's times when we resist that change, we resist the call of God that has called us to put away certain behaviors or certain ways of thinking. And uh, we see that growth, though, is the normal part of a Christian process, a normal part of growing up, that, that even Jesus grew. Uh, there's a passage that I want to share with you this morning, a passage that was very important to me when I was growing up. I remember we had um, the LTC convention back when I was in high school years. And um, Luke 2.52 was a passage that was used for the scripture for that year. And that scripture has stuck with me all that time because I tended to think of Jesus as this sort of a static figure, a figure that didn't change. Now, we know from our Bibles, we know I, the Lord, do not change. We know Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yet Jesus also was the word that became flesh. Jesus was with God in the beginning, and then Jesus changed. And Jesus emptied himself of this power. And Jesus came to the earth, and he became this humble being, this human being, the son of a poor carpenter. So Jesus, uh, he did change. He did grow, and, and Luke tells us that here in Luke two and chapter, uh, Luke chapter two and verse fifty-two. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. And I think that's something that we have to be careful not to be afraid of. We can't be afraid of growth. We can't be afraid. Of change now not all change is good not all change is growth but I think through prayer and through focus and study through this community of believers that we have here at Lakeview that we can understand what growth looks like and we can understand what are changes that are dangerous the point is that we know that Jesus grew Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor and when I see Jesus growing in wisdom and statue and favor with men and with God, I know that that's something that I want for me. I know that's something that I want for my family. I know that's something that I want for my church family and for you. I want us to be able to grow in wisdom and stature and favor with God and with men. Well, how do we actually do that? I'm sure that you're scratching your head asking, how do we do that, Brad? How do we grow in wisdom and stature and favor? Well, we know that we can grow in wisdom when we pray. 
James tells us that when we pray, the Lord is willing to give to any who ask of it liberally, more, more so than we've ever asked for. All we do is we, we pray for wisdom, godly wisdom, wisdom from above, and God is willing, able, and going to provide that to us. But we have to say the prayer. We have to want that. We have to seek after it. We have to knock on that door of wisdom and say, yes, God, please help me grow in wisdom. Help me grow in knowledge. I want to change my habits. I want to change my behaviors. That suddenly coming into my daily Bible reading or weekly Bible reading or annual Bible reading isn't so hard. And it's something that I look forward to. I look forward to jumping into God's word and trying to find out what it is he has in store for me today and what is it that I need to learn from this passage and take with me and apply it to my life. This scripture can help become a window into my life that I can see within me some of the shortcomings that I have that I have as a human being, that is imperfect, that is created by a loving and faithful God, yet I am imperfect. God is working in me and through me, and I, and I want that and I need that, but I have so much growth to do. And when I read and when I study, when I pray, when I dig into God's Word, when I really chew on it and think on it, when I have an open mind, and read a passage in a way that maybe I've never read it that way before. Maybe I've never actually realized that that's what it said before. And and that's okay. That's okay that you can come to that realization. I kind of have that with this very passage here in Luke 52. Luke 2.52. I never would have guessed that Jesus grew in wisdom. How could Jesus grow in wisdom if Jesus was the eternal with God in heaven? Jesus was the word of God become flesh. Jesus is providing us with this inspired word to carry with us and to write this law in our minds and write it on our hearts. And yet this says that Jesus grew. That has to do with what Jesus has done for us and what he has taken on by becoming that perfect sacrifice for us. I can use this scripture to give that window into my heart and my life that when I read it, the Spirit works within me and convicts me of the sin that I have in my life, of the shortcomings that I have in my life, of the sin that I just won't yet let go of. I need to learn how to grow. One of the ways that I know that I needed to learn how to grow had to do with submitting to authority. How many, how many of us were this rebellious teenager that we did not want to submit to the authorities? We want to do things our own way. We want to do things the way that we think is best. And when we see other people out in the world making decisions for us, making decisions without including my opinion, you know, some of these uh, movie directors and video game makers, uh, they they really need to ask me before they make some of these decisions, let me tell you, because I've got some good ideas and I just can't imagine why they did it the way they did it. No, but on a more serious note, we have to have the humility that it takes to recognize that we are not in control, that it's God that's in control. We have to have that same humility that Christ had, the mind of Christ, that he was able to empty himself of that power and and he was willing to come to earth to be able to grow in wisdom and stature with God and men. So one of the ways that we do that is through practicing these these, uh, disciplines of study, prayer, and community. One of the things that we study when we read uh, 1 Peter in chapter 2, we see Peter encouraging us to have this humble attitude to recognize that we're not the ones in charge, that we are citizens of God's kingdom. And as citizens of God's kingdom, we are to be subject to the rule of God. We are to be subject to the rule of man, the people that God has placed in charge, as Peter describes it here. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, starting verse 
13, Peter writes, Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every authority, whether to the king or to the supreme authority or to the governors who are sent by him to punish those who do no wrong and to condemn those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. You see, even if we preach and preach and preach and teach and try to change the perception that people have about crime and punishment, about material wealth, about blessings, about physical health in the here and now, people will still look upon one another and they will see God in their view as judging you or me, when those authorities are being exercised against me in a way that is wrong. And what Peter says to do here is to emulate Jesus just as he did on his march to the cross. Jesus had done no wrong. Jesus had not sinned against God, against man. But Jesus was charged with a crime, falsely. And Jesus submitted to that authority. Jesus fulfilled the will of God in going to the cross and bearing that shame, bearing that sin for you and I. Peter here encourages us to continue to follow that same path that Jesus has laid out for us. In verse 15, Peter says, For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant and foolish talk of men. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. I don't think that we need to go very far to try to understand the difference between good and evil here. We have so many passages that try to tell us the right way to go and the right way to be and the right way to live versus what is the path towards sin and death. And what Peter is telling us here is to live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. We can try to use our freedom as a way to cover up that the evil that we want to commit and say, don't ask me about my day. Don't ask, don't ask to look at my internet history. Don't ask where I've been or what I've been doing or what I've been spending my money on. I have that freedom of privacy that I don't have to tell you anything. You know, that's just one example, and maybe it's not a very good one. But what Peter is saying here is that by our good character, by our good attitude, by our submission to God and his will, our light will shine. Our light will shine out into the world, and he asks us to live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants for God. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God and honor the king. Now, when I said I had some growing up to do, so many people, yes, they have this rebellious streak where they don't want to submit to the authorities. They don't want to compromise on their, their, um, what they see as the right way of doing things. And what God encourages us, Peter encourages us here to do, is to uh, show the proper respect to everyone, to love the brotherhood of believers, to fear God, and to honor the king. That's hard for some people to do, that's hard because we haven't made that transition of growth yet. We haven't grown past this rebellious stage that we know what's best and we're the ones that are in charge. What we need to do is pray. When we pray to God and we study, and we come together with one another, we understand that there's so much growth to be had. I have so much room to grow, so much progress to make, and that can kind of sound discouraging, but it's a good thing because God's encouraging us to grow, to encourage us to grow just as Jesus grew in wisdom 
in stature with God and with men.